Alright everyone, this will be my Blue Angel number 5 solo tutorial. So this video is going to be for all you sim nerds and Blue Angel fans alike who have always just wanted to get a general understanding of what's going on in the jet during a demo uh, concerning comms and parameters. Uh, just to make a disclaimer now, this will all be based on knowledge from an outsider's perspective of the Blue Angels organization. Of course, this is only a video game and the only people that truly know every detail are the real team members themselves. Today I'm in DCS World flying the FA-18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics. Although they produced a Lot 20 variant of the Hornet for DCS, I am currently in jet number 163485, which is a Lot 10 Hornet that the real team currently has in its inventory. Also note that there will be some third-party mods visible in the cockpit that are group specifically modeled to execute the Blue Angel demo, including the Hanhart stopwatch, inverted fuel pumps, and a virtual spring to help keep the jet steady when we're flying. Uh, now with all that being said, let's hop into the virtual cockpit and we'll start this jet up. So the first thing I like to do whenever I hop into a server and I select my aircraft is I like to sort of preset all my switches, uh, just kind of lighten the load once we get things rolling, because you know, once we go canopies down, APUs on, uh, it, things go by pretty quickly. So the first thing I like to do is I like to turn my strobe light off, and you'll see that come down here. This is just a track recording of a flight I did earlier. So the strobe light is off behind the throttle there. The next thing I like to do is I like to move my flaps to half, move my INS and radar alignment to operational and ground, and I'll start flipping my DDIs into the on position along with my HUD brightness, my UFC brightness, and the MPCD brightness at the very bottom there. That's the bottom screen. Once that is all set, uh, I am all set to you know turn the battery on and go canopies down. I'll bring the boarding ladder up here momentarily. You'll see a little notification for that. And very momentarily, we'll bring the canopy down. There it goes. And I'll flip my APU on. I like to turn my mirrors off whenever I'm in PCS. It kind of saves some frame rate. And mirrors don't really work in the first place, so it's just one less thing to worry about. Wait for that green light to come online. That says the APU is ready. We'll crank to the right. The Hornet, you like to crank your right engine first to give a hydraulic power to the aircraft. At 20%, I'll introduce fuel into the engine by moving the throttle to idle. Some people out there say 25 is better, but you know, I've heard varying things, so I like to stick to 20. It gets the jet going. All right, that's all spooled up. We'll move to the left engine, and I'll start moving my comm radios to channel 8 for solos. Roll left, roll left. And channel 18 for the ground frequency. Flight controls. I'll introduce fuel to Flight the left controls. engine now. Turn my smoke pressure on. My HUD is selected for my, DD, my left DDI. Got my right out going, just making sure that's all going. And I'll select my FCS page on the right DDI. Now that my left engine spooled up, I'll turn the APU off. And I will also momentarily I'll reset my FCS. So there goes the APU. And in a second you'll see all those warnings for my FCS go away because I'll be hitting this button right here, the FCS reset switch. Like so. And now that's away. You also notice I've turned on my waypoint for waypoint 2. That's going to be center point for today. And I've put the scale of the HSI down to 10 since I'll be generally, that's the most I'll be flying around center point is 10 miles. Uh, since from center point, it goes out 5 nautical miles in every direction. So now I've turned on my spring. I'm going to do a quick wipe out of the controls. Just make sure everything's nice and loose. Got nothing blocking my flight controls. I'll do that with half first, and then you'll notice I went to auto, or flaps up, and I'll do the same thing. Once that's done, move it back into the half position. That's the first thing I like to sort of point out is I've seen quite a, people, quite a few people start up 
with their flaps full. Sometimes they leave them up for whatever reason. They'll, they'll taxi out not even knowing. So one of the big things, and they'll even go over it in the takeoff checks, is that you want to make sure your flight controls are set in the correct position. So in that case, for the, for the blues at least, that will be 12, 30, 30, 30, and in our case, one down. If you ever listen to the real thing, you'll hear four down because their spring actually pulls the stick all the way into the forward position uh, with that 40 pounds of pressure. So they'll they'll get the rating 12, 30, 30, 30, four down instead of one. Uh, the spring in DCS is just enough to where you know, we can still pull a lot, but it's not going to give us that four down that we're looking for. All right, we'll unpause. So we've already wiped out the controls, and so now we're just waiting for alignment. Right about at 1.30, I'll start doing my takeoff checks. Usually that's something, if you're in a Delta, uh, that's something always that uh, the boss will do in the number one jet. But if you're just practicing with a number six, obviously I'm alone, so I don't really have to do it. It's just something to check. Uh, you want to just kind of indicate everything's all set to go uh, aside from your flight control. So the way that'll go is take off checks and everyone will check in with their call sign instead of their number. So the first thing we'll do is check your smoke pressure arm, check your trim set, check how you know my heading in this case is 310. Uh, you'll, you'll probably see it in a bit here. My current altimeter setting is 29er, 79er, so they'll say that. And it'll, we'll go on to check your barrel warning zero, check your FCS 12, 30, 30, 30, one down, check your feel, check your seat armed, and lights out. So that means I don't have any of my lights on, my landing light isn't on, my strobe lights aren't on, none of my position lights are on, it's just a nice clean jet. And everyone will check in. And then you'll see in a moment here, I'll flip the smoke on and then back off just so that they can test to see that that is working for them like so we'll get rid of the moving map here there's no need to really see it my eyes will be outside the jet for the most part and now that my alignment is done I've moved my ground alignment to nav my parking brake is off and I'll put the pilot model in just for uh, fun of it got a missing texture there but I'll start to taxi out to the left I'll stay on the, in this case, the left side of the taxiway. That way, uh, number six can stay on my wing instead of taxiing in the trail. That's one thing the Blues like to do is they like to taxi pretty close to each other on the wing. A little comp cart model you can uh, get through our mod, which I'll have a link to description below. That's all part of the mod is you get the, the stopwatch here, you get the fuel pump and the smoke light and the fuel pump indicators. I got some lights there for that. And then uh, in some cases you get the pilot body as well. So you'll notice now on my FCS page, I have all zeros and then one degree nose down. The stab position is the position of my elevator. So that's just indicating one down with the spring. Uh, that's because I'm going to be setting up for the dirty roll on takeoff. That's number five's first maneuver of the demonstration. They can he usually likes to set his flaps to, to auto or full up uh, as they're on the roll. One thing that all demonstration pilots will also do is confirm their altimeter settings just to make sure everyone is on the same uh, altitude set uh, when they're in their HUD. So how that would go is boss will say Boss is set 2979, zero feet, and then every single pilot will confirm the altimeter settings, whether they are in radar altimeter or barometric altimeter uh, for number four. Uh, just because we're solos, we're going to be using radar altimeter today, or rad out. And that could be accomplished by setting your UFC switch to the radar mode and you have to have your radar altimeter dial there uh, tuned up a little bit so you get that orange light. Taxiing down, you've also noticed, this is kind of for shock and awe, it has no effect on how we uh, fly the demo, in the sim at least. 
but in the real jet, the solos and the diamond like to use their independent frequencies on channels 9 and 8. 9 is for the diamond and 8 is for the solos, so I have 8 plugged in. And you have typically your, for the greater formation, they're going to be on channels 18 and 16 on COM2. Now 18 is the startup frequency, but as they taxi out to the runway, they'll switch to 16, which you have you'll probably notice I've switched to there. I'll pause the video. I'll be getting off the taxiway over here. Just so I can do my maneuver over center point. If I went all the way down to the end there, we'd probably be doing my maneuver a little bit crowd right, which we don't want. And once we're all set there, we'll bring the jet to a stop. I like to put the number five on the pitch ladder right on that white line and bring it to a stop. And you'll not see it here, but number six will bring up line abreast right up next to me so that uh, we're holding short of the line. Uh, typically, if it's a standard high show, the diamond's going to be off to the left. They're setting up their diamond house scroll cage on takeoff, and we're just waiting for them to pass by. So once we're at a full stop here, me and Six are just going to be you know, checking everything's in place for takeoff. One thing I'll do is I'll say, check your flaps half, pumps on, minor up, flexes all zeros, one degrees, nose down, rat out. So what that's telling him is, hey, just make sure your flaps are half, because he's not doing the dirty roll, he's doing the low transition. Check your pumps on, because he's going to be inverted for quite a while when he does his Immelman. The all zeros part is once again referencing my FCS, and then the one degrees nose down, that's the stab position, and then we're on radar altimeter, and he'll respond with this call sign, so that'll sound something like, you know, I won't use a call sign here, so I'll just say six, flaps half, pumps on, rat out. And then we're all set to go. Boss will say something like, solos, we're clear for takeoff, or you'll hear from him, thanks XO, cleared for takeoff, and then that's your cue to say, solos ready to rock the airspace, boss, or whatever airport you're at, you can use the airport name. They'll get on the roll, and as they cross in front of you, and they are clear of the flight line, you're going to say your call sign, and that you're running up to 72%. That's other, one other thing. I like to switch to the radar page once I'm uh, once I got everything checked there. So once that's checked, we'll run up the engines to 72%. We're still squeezing the brakes. So I'll call off brakes now, and then six detach, and he'll move in front of me. And then typically I'd scoot over to the right to get in true trail behind him, and then we'd turn left onto the active together. Uh, with a simple come on left, okay, and we'll turn the aircraft. A little bit of nose wheel steering high. And we'll bring the aircraft to a stop. Still stay in line of rest. Okay, so. To go over the takeoff for this, uh, like I said, we're just doing the dirty roll on takeoff. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit tough with the FCS that ED has in this jet. So just I'm going to give you some pointers that I like to use and to kind of work around that. So on takeoff, we'll say, you know, we're clear for takeoff, our section takeoff maneuvers. And that's just the standard high show uh, departure for five and six. That'll indicate that we'll be uh, going in formation together. Uh, since we're in section. He'll reply with his call sign to indicate that he's ready, and I'll say, let's run him up. Or check your parking brake off, let's run him up. So I'll run up the engines to 85% RPM. Once I have that stabilized, I will look at number six and give him a head nod, kind of like that. Uh, in the real jet, they'll just give each other a thumbs up, but since we don't really have the animations for that, the head nod works just fine. It's a visible but not audible cue uh, just to tell him, hey, I'm good to go whenever you're ready, since he's leading this takeoff. He'll call off brakes now, 
blower is ready now, and that will be for us to go into first stage afterburner. Uh, that's enough to where we can quickly get off the ground, but it's still enough leeway for me uh, so that I don't lose him. He doesn't just go flying away in full afterburner. At about 140, he'll call blowers ready now again. That will be my indication to go into military power. Uh, at that point, I'll have my smoke turned on. And uh, once I'm in military power, the smoke will start appearing for the crowd. Uh, since the burners kind of, they literally burn the smoke away, so you can't see it. Uh, the whole reason we're going into mill power in the first place is so that I don't scrape the burner cannons on the runway. Uh, since they're, the turkey feathers are fully deployed and in mill power, the, the nozzles like to close. At 170, I'll pitch all the way back on the stick to 20 degrees. I'll stick the water line on 20 degrees and I'll wait till about 150 feet. And that's when I'll start my roll. Probably want a little bit of push in it. Uh, just so that you don't uh, load the aircraft too much. This jet likes to roll under zero G. Uh, some pilots have described this as literally falling, so I'm sure you can imagine how comfortable that is uh, at about 200 feet over the ground. And then the, the biggest thing with this jet specifically in DCS is that if you take off with flaps auto, once you are wings level, or once really, uh, we can get away with it since we're rolling, but if you're doing the no flap section blower go, which is the remote show departure, the second your mains are off the ground, you have to switch the flaps back to half and then to auto really quickly. Otherwise, it gets into this weird glitch where you get full nose up trim and then you have to cycle the gear and it's just not fun. So once I'm wings level for my roll, I will flip my uh, half uh, my flap switch to half and then back to auto. And I'll turn my smoke off, I'll pitch up a little bit, and then start a left bank uh, to clear the flight line. And we'll, uh, I'll go over how to bring up the gear and all that once we get rolling. So, I'll unpause the mission. Uh, also notice that I've started my stopwatch, that way I don't forget it. I just want to make sure that's always in the right sequence. Run up the power, wait for that 85, 85. We'll pretend like I gave the head nod to 6. And then he'll call off brakes now, whenever he's ready. Blower is ready now. Now I'm advancing the first stage afterburner. You'll hear the burner click. I'll turn the smoke on since they can't see it now that I'm an afterburner. It's just one last thing to worry about. There's 140 going back into mill. 170 pitching up. There's 20 degrees. And 150 going to roll. Find the right roll rate. Move the flaps, pitch up, smokes off. And you want to make sure you don't go below the horizon there. You don't want to sink on that. Pitch up to about 35 degrees. I can bring the gear up now. And then once my jet is clean, I'll roll the aircraft inverted. Just a light push to keep it from falling. And then I'll roll to the left to get us into a right turn since we're inverted. Once 6 says he is clear, he'll say clouds no factor. But typically that'd be a call for uh, Mo or Exo, whoever's uh, controlling on the ground there. And then you'll indicate to your opposing solo that you'll be doing high show clears. Alright, so I'm flying on outbound heading, so in this case it's 039. So I'm perfectly parallel with the show line. There's our four mile marker. Now, in real life, obviously they don't have the luxury of just putting something uniform like a marker uh, to tell them, hey, like this is where I need to be over. Um, they actually do something called circle and arrivals. They'll go out and they'll pick markings around a, a specific show site to, to pick out uh, mile markers around the uh, site. Uh, since we're in DCS and everything's kind of bland, uh, we put down some markers there to help us out. So the goal of the solos is to hit center point at the same time obviously to do that we're going to use our stopwatches at the same time and with a certain call we're going to try to get over that four mile marker there at 10 seconds and you want to be in the neighborhood of 400 knots if you can if both of you can peg 400 knots and be over that marker at 10 seconds 
you will have a pretty decent chance of getting around center point. So to do that, we got to get to our beam point. Right now we're roughly a beam, but typically you want to enter anywhere between a 45 and 90 degree turn. Uh, you do it any less or any more than that, it's kind of hard to manipulate the jet. I like to kind of turn in for about 1,500 feet, but the more you do it, the more you can play with it. So once you're about here, you're, you're just about to, to cross the show line itself. Five will make a call, let me know when you're beam. And then six will, will reply, a beam. Let me know when you could take your mark. He'll say, take your mark. And then stand by, mark it. And then I like to tap the stopwatch to the cadence of one pate to two. And then you'll say your call sign. So in my case, flex is in right knife edge. And then they'll say their call sign and indicate that they're in uh, right knife edge. The knife edge is obviously the maneuver. Uh, when they're saying right or in the next maneuver you'll hear left, that's indicating what side of the line we're going to be on. So if we're both on the right side from our perspective, we won't hit each other. But if I say, you know, right knife edge, and he says left knife edge, we'll hit each other if you think about it. Unpause here. So let me know when you're beam. I'm a beam. Let me know when you can take mark. Take mark. Stand by mark it. There's one, two, three. Flex is in right knife edge. So now I'm turning in. I'm powering up to get to 400 knots. We'll see if we can hit 4 miles in 10 seconds. That'll sound like 10 seconds mark 4.0 from number 6. Now, it's his job to just peg 400 knots. As 5, that could always vary. Because we're human beings, we're not robots. Nothing's always going to be perfect, but we can always strive for it. Number 5's job is to work off of 6, so he has to either slow down or speed up based off of uh, where he is in relation to number six. So six is going to be saying 10 seconds mark and whatever distance he is, whether it's you know 4.0 or 4.1, 3.9, and you have to adjust to that. And then from there on out, he'll be calling out three miles mark, airspeed, two miles mark, airspeed, mile and a half mark, airspeed. Up until about one mile, that's your job to make a call, and that's when we'll go smoke on. We'll call contact when we see each other, turn the smoke off, and then we'll commence the maneuver. Right there, he would have called three miles mark. Because I don't have a six, I'm just going to try my best to peg 400, just to kind of show you the red and green, what the airspeed looks like. Mile and a half mark. So this maneuver is going to be executed at 150 feet AGL. And uh, once I unpause here, uh, we'll go smoke on, just to kind of simulate that, and you'll watch it go off with the indicator here. The maneuver itself, you don't have to pop too much, or yug, that's what it's called. I'm going to yug to my best ability to about one degree, and then roll the aircraft into a 90 degree angle of bank and give it a little push. And then when I roll out back to wings level, I'll say roll. And then once I'm wings level, I'll say flex clear, and then they'll give their call sign, indicate that they're clear, and then I will bank and pull. Well, I'll bank, pause, and then pull. It's about a 45 degree bank, and up to 25 degrees, and then we'll go into our point rolls. So smoke on, contact, and smoke off. Ready, hit it, roll. Roll right, roll right. Pull out, flex clear. Fix clear. Pitch in. All right, so the point rolls kind of go something like this. So I'll say stand by roll. That's going to indicate you know, wings level. So stand by roll. The next one is just, you're going to be calling stand by roll a total of three times. So the second one is going to be a roll to the invert position. And the third one is going to be a 270 roll onto the knife edge position. And then you can just kind of hold it there to the best of your ability. And then you're just waiting for six to call. Inverted test complete, pumps on. And then you'll indicate that your pumps are on. Roll out on your own power and push to wings level. 
So obviously, uh, you can with the stock jet you can hold inverted without uh, losing oil pressure or losing fuel. So the real jet, that's what this guy is for. That little safeguard switch, you flip that up, and you could turn your fuel pump on. That allows them to stay inverted upwards of uh, anywhere between 45 seconds to even a minute. Uh, in this jet, uh, ED doesn't have that modeled, so we can stay almost inverted as long as we want. Like I said, this is just kind of for shock and awe. You will notice, however, on the right side, you might see an orange light come on. That's indicating that the aircraft is under zero G and or negative AOA. So now I'm turning to my next beam point. We're going to be setting up now for the inverted to inverted roll. So I'm not going to repeat the beam calls. You can kind of just hear uh, the clock go off to sort of get the cadence in your mind for how we're doing that and sort of get an idea of what I'm looking at to turn in. So you can, whether that's the distance uh, from center point, in this case it's four and a half, uh, sometimes 4.8 is good. Uh, it really just varies based on, especially if you're working off of a diamond uh, when you have to time off of them. Uh, it's ne Solos is never going to be that uniform. We'll turn in, and Six is going to give me the exact same calls as the last maneuver. He'll be tell me when he crosses uh, 10 seconds where he is in relation to center point then uh, when he crosses each mile marker what airspeed he's going to be at and once we get to about just about one mile I'll call ready hit it just a light yug and a roll to the invert position once you're inverted you're going to turn your smoke on this altitude is going to be 200 feet AGL and then when we cross, I'll call ready, hit it just before we cross. Go right, go right. Go right, go right. Go right, go right. That way uh, it doesn't look like we're crossing when we're inverted. We actually want to look like we're doing something as we cross. So there's center point right there. Right, go right. Ready, hit it. Roll it. Up, push out a little bit. Now they used to push all the way, uh, but they're trying now to keep... Uh, negative G off the aircraft since they're pretty old airframes. So we're just going to hold just above, uh, keep the flight path marker just above the horizon. That way you don't drop too much when you roll. Uh, when you call clear here, it's going to be, you know, in my case, flex clear and six is clear. Turn your smoke off. And then in our case, it'll be a 270 roll to the left. And I'm going to pull to keep uh, my jet on the horizon so I don't sink or climb. Clear. Turn the smoke off. Roll, pull. We'll pull to directly behind the crowd. In this case, it's about 310. Wings level. And then you'll notice I'll drop my tail hook in preparation for our next maneuver, which is the Fortis. So, right after you drop your tail hook, you can already start thinking about turning to your downwind heading, which in this case is 219, or about 220. I'm going to go a little bit obtuse of that because I want to make sure I have enough turning room. You don't want to be turning too tight, it just kind of helps six out. It's uh, not as stressful. So as you're back here, uh, my sweet spot as far as altitude is anywhere between uh, 800 feet to 1,000 feet. Uh, but 800, I like uh, it's, it's a lot better. So got the tail hook on. Once he sees you, he's going to say, contact pumps off, because he's not going to be inverted for this maneuver. You'll reply, pumps on, because your job is to be upside down for this, and you want to make sure you have enough oil pressure. So, once I call pumps on, at that point, I'm calling out my airspeeds you know, by the 10. So, you know, in that case, 350, 340, 330, until he gets in. Uh, once he says he's in, I don't have to keep spitting out my airspeeds to him. At this point, I'm just looking for, all right, what's the best point to turn in? You want to roll in roughly at about two miles. Uh, the more running room, the better. Uh, that way you don't kind of rush yourself and or your opposing solo. Right about here, I'll turn in. Also confirm that I have my tax light on. That's another call I missed is uh, once you roll, you'll say behind the crowd, you check the tax light on, which it is. And right about here, we're approaching the 90. This call always gets everyone, and it takes quite a few flights to get down. 
because it's a tongue twister. So I'll say stand by the gear, gear, and we'll drop the landing gear. I'll add a little bit of power just so that we can keep our airspeed up. And the next call will be flex gear down, hook down, flaps up, boards up. Although it's going to be said a lot quicker than that. And then he'll say the exact same thing. And then I'll indicate that we're at the 90 for the Fortis. So we'll drop the gear, add a little power, and then once the gear down, I'll say flex gear down, hook down, flats up, boards up. And then six is gear down, hook down, flats up, boards up, at the 90 for the Fortis. And now that we have less than 90 degrees of turn to go, I'm going to be just looking at that line, then scanning back to my HUD, making sure that I don't go uh, below 300 feet, which is what the altitude would be for this maneuver. And the airspeed I like to keep between 270 and 280. So we'll say rolling out the Fortis at about two miles there. And once again, I'm shooting for 300 feet. You don't want to roll in any later than a mile and a half because you want to give six enough time to roll in so that he's line of rest off you by center point. So what that will look like is I'll say flex the set, rolling in. He'll say he's clear. I'll yug my aircraft this time to about two, maybe three degrees and unload it. So zero G, roll in. And then once I'm wings level, I'll push all that back out to try and capture the, uh, the altitude that I lost on the roll-in. Although uh, sometimes I can get a little bit low, personally, but you want to always shoot for 300 feet and then just try to set it. If you try to manipulate the aircraft too much, then six has to work. Uh, and then usually that results in one of you ending up in a pilot-induced oscillation. Rolled out for the Fortis, tax lights on, hooks down, pull. So over here I'll call flex a set, rolling in, six is clear, pitch up, roll, and then push all that back out and I'll try to keep my VSI, which is just above my altitude indicator, as close to zero as possible. Now you notice here I'm not directly on the show line as I'd like to be. Uh, even though we're inverted, it looks like we're to the left of it. We're actually outside the show line. So this would be a call here outboard the show line, and then I'll reference my altitude. We are 20 feet low. Uh, ideally, you want to be on the show line on altitude, but you can indicate you're inboard or outboard by a hair or a little, and then you can say if you're how high or low you are in reference to uh, the target altitude. I'll try to hold that all the way through center point, which is right there, at which point I'll say center point, push it out. I'll push out the water line to 10 degrees, and I'll say roll and out, and six will say it's clear. I'll initiate my roll out, a little bit of push, and a little pull at the end so I don't enter his box. We'll start a left turn now, just a gentle left bank. I'll call gear up, hook up. I won't move the stick because he's trying to fly formation kind of an odd angle. He's kind of be kind of offset above and aft of us on the left side there. It's kind of a weird sight picture for him. So I like to hold the jet as still as possible. The next call will be flex gear up, hook up, pumps off. And all he has to say is gear up, hook up. And then you'll say six detach. Six is clear. Once he says he's clear, both of you are going to break. You're going to just roll wings level to the best of your ability. And he's going to break uh, 90 degrees to the left. So six clear, we'll roll out, a little bit of overroll there. And then we're setting up for the MRT. So you'll say behind the crowd for the MRT, he'll reply with his call sign, and you'll say your fuel state. So in this case, X91, a 9,100 pounds of gas on board. And there's uh, certain points throughout the demo where you'll, you'll indicate that with your opposing solo since you guys uh, burn fuel a little bit better than the diamond does. So this is a little bit rushed. Typically there's a pretty substantial time gap from the time you set up for the MRT and the time the diamond actually rolls out for uh, their maneuver, which would be the diamond dirty loop, uh, pending that it's a high show. So at this point I would be calling out turning to arc at 5 miles and the airspeed is 320. So that means I'm going to be arcing around at 5 miles, which is the edge of the airspace and I'm getting set to turn in for the MRT. I'm trying to shoot for that 1500 feet, that's a good altitude I like to use. 
I gotta try my best not to exit five miles, but it's little, it's hard at some time, so totally understandable. So now I'm about 90 degrees to the line. I'm gonna make my next call is gonna be turning in from five miles, and I'll call it my airspeed. So turning in from five miles, 345, and I'll add in a little bit of power just so I can kind of keep that airspeed. Roll out on the line. Now this airspeed is always going to vary, uh, but you want to make sure as you cross each mile marker, you're calling out your when you're crossing it with a mark, and then your airspeed. Typically, I like to use 350. Uh, however, they can go anywhere you know, as low as that, all the way up to 400, because uh, five has to time that off the diamond. In this case, it'd be two mile or two miles 350. You'll notice for both this and the sneak pass, they aren't calling out mark. It's just going to be two miles, one mile, and then airspeed. You can do this maneuver anywhere between 250 feet above the ground all the way to 300. I like to do 250 because the lower the better, but we don't want to be too dangerous. So I'm going to hold that to the best of my ability up until about a half mile or 0.5 from center point. So once I hit 0.5 here in a second, I'm going to go full afterburner, just so I can, well, the point is so that we're doing a minimum radius turn, so you want to be full afterburner. And the, the jets take a little bit of time to spool up to that point, so that's why I'm doing it a half a mile out. And then right as I cross center point here, I'm going to bank the wings to 90 degrees angle bank, and I'm going to pull as hard as I can and try to arrest 250 feet. Uh, but you just know you still have that player in between 250 and 300 if you can't hold it that well. So there's the afterburner click. And ready, hit it. Roll, pull. And then right about here, I'm going to pull the power back into mill. Because if you hold the afterburners in all the way, you're going to overspeed the maneuver. So you'll hear me pull out of afterburner. There's the click. Still pulling, trying to bleed off that speed. This jet doesn't bleed off speed as good as the real jet, so you have to kind of work with it with the power and pull. Now the goal is to try to arc this around and then uh, do a pitch at about center point there. Uh, and you want to be pretty darn slow for that, but I want to usually be an afterburner for that. So I know on this one I was a little bit too tight on my turn, so I kind of finished outboard the line and crowd right slightly. But the goal is you really want to slow this thing down. The slower you are, the tighter your turn radius. So right about here, I'm full aft stick. And then I'm going to pitch all the way up. I think I went to about 50, maybe 45 degrees. And then so you're going to do a right roll for that. But to make sure you don't over roll, while you're pitching all the way back, you have to like kind of jab the stick to the left a little bit. Like so. So that you don't overroll. So that's that's a pretty good sight picture right there. That's a really good airspeed. That's a really good pitch. Look at that. I'm right on the line. Hold it for a little bit. Gentle roll to the left to the invert position. And I'll call horizon in this case. Horizon 2-1, 250, coming right. I'll roll 270 to the right. Pull about three G's on the horizon. You'll notice I click out of afterburner so I don't overspeed and six can catch me. And I'll pull directly behind the crowd and set up for our next maneuver. At which point I'll say we're behind the crowd if he throws an RT. He'll say his call sign. We'll go smoke on and then smoke off. Just like that. And then we'll start our right turn. Usually the, the time frame between the MRT, the double farvel, and the opposing MRT is pretty quick, so you have to you can pull quite a bit back here. The six isn't supposed to be flying that tight, so you can maneuver as need be. So right here, uh, I'm going to be shooting for about 400 knots. I think I went about 410 on this case, but around 400 knots is fine. Uh, anywhere between 500 and 700 feet is a good altitude. Uh, any lower or higher and kind of ruin the optics of the maneuver. I'm about 600 on this one. I want to make sure you're on the line, and we'll go smoke on. At which point, 
Six is going to be line up rest off your left wing. He's going to take the lead, and you'll tell him that by saying lead left. Then as you cross over the crowd, you'll go smoke off. Then you're going to start bringing the power back a little bit, and then dropping back uh, with that. You're also going to drop your altitude a little bit to keep the optic that your line up rests the crowd. Uh, since you'll be closer, you have to be a little bit lower uh, to keep that optic. Once you're all set, you'll call ready, hit it. You'll yug, roll 270 degrees, pause, and then pull all the way with military power. And then once you cross with number six, you'll call smoke on. And then once he hits about 380, he'll call that out. And then the goal is to hold 380 knots throughout that turn. So ready, hit it. Go yug, roll, pause, pull. That pause there kind of cancels out the previous flight control input and it kind of prevents you from jiggling the jet around. I'm trying to hold 380. Also trying to pick up the line so the airspeed can falter a little bit. You'll call contact a little bit before this point. Got a little ahead of myself. At which point you'll indicate to number six where you will be in relation to the center point trailer. So that will be either center point, which is ideal, uh, hair outboard or hair inboard. Uh, you really just want to hold that line to the best of your ability. I'm a little bit high here. Uh, 300 feet is a pretty decent altitude for the cross, and you're going to be offset a little bit above 6, but it's his job to make that hit, so he's supposed to stack below you. We'll cross over center point. And then you'll call roll, the wings level. Pull, and then that could be anywhere between 30 and 45 degrees. At this case, I went to 35. And then it'll be ready, hit it, at which you'll do three and a half aileron rolls to the right so that you finish in the inverted position. And there's three and a half. We'll go smoke off once your wing's level. You'll call clear at that very moment. And then once he's clear, you can do a 270 roll to the right. And then pull onto your downward heading. Now, typically we finish pretty high on this maneuver, so I like to get the nose down as soon as possible so that my run-ins can be remotely uniform. Like I said before, they're not always going to be the same, but the, the more you can make things normalize, the better. Always, to, always better to be two steps ahead of the jet. So now we're setting up for the opposing horizontal rolls. The run-in's going to be no different from the knife edge and the invert to invert, so... Here I am starting my stopwatch, shoot for 10 seconds at that 4 mile marker, about 400 knots. I was a little bit quick here, so I hit 3.9 over 10 seconds. So that if he hits 4.0 and you're at 3.9, you have to slow down. So this maneuver is going to be executed at 150 feet initially. And then right after he calls mile and a half mark, and he'll say his airspeed, you want to go smoke on. And then at one mile, you'll start a gentle pull to three degrees. So there's the smoke. And one mile, pull. You'll hold it there. And then ready, hit it. Two aileron rolls to the left. All right, all Lowers right. pop. Pull. Turn the smoke off. About 85 degrees. And then roll. 90 degree bank to the left. Lowers, pull. So out of afterburner, and then you're gently pulling onto the horizon. It looks like I captured that uh, 90 degree bank pretty well because I'm directly behind the crowd. There's about 310. All flex clear, six clear. Roll out to the right. As you'll see, I can go outside the jet here for a moment. I'm pointed pretty darn well right behind the crowd. All right, now we're finally set up for the sneak pass, so you'll call to six behind the crowd for the sneak to vertical rolls. You're doing the actual sneak pass, but he's doing the vertical rolls from behind the crowd. How I set up for that is I'll, once again, turn to downwind heading. I'll descend down to a decent altitude again, 
Uh, the steeper you are, the more airspeed you'll get, and this jet Altitude. loves to go fast. Altitude. So you gotta be careful with that. You also notice I have the, the boards out right now to help slow me down because I'm in a power idle descent. Once again, I'll say just like the MRT, turning to arc at five miles, in this case, 345 or 350 for a more solid number. We'll try to find five miles. 1,500 feet's a good uh, running altitude. Right now I'm 90 to the line. And then for me, right as I hear OK from boss while they're doing the left echelon roll, that's when I'll say turning in from five miles, 350 gates. So gates means I'm pushing the throttle over uh, the literal gate into the afterburner stage. And I'm going full AB, so I'll say four miles, 0 0.65. We're always gonna be using Mach number in this case now. This will be uh, pushing near the speed of sound. Three miles, 0 0.85. Two miles, 0.97. You'll notice I went a little bit fast. The goal is to uh, arrest 0.96 Mach over the over center point. And to do that, you typically are full AB until you hit 0.95, but I got a little carried away with myself, so I got a little too close to the sound barrier there. You bring the power back a little bit. One mile, 0.96, and I'm gonna try to hold that 0.96 until I cross center point, at which I'll say flex is clear, bring the power back, pitch, roll very gently, and I'm pulling back all the way, and then we'll roll wings level. Which point six is doing his vertical rolls, and the only thing I'm thinking about is joining the diamond, because we'll be doing either the line of rest loop or the line of rest flat pass. So I'm going to do the luxury of skipping forward a little bit here since this is just a flat pass by myself, nothing too special. Uh, when you're number five at all in line abreast, whether it's the you know, line abreast loop, flat pass, or even the high alpha uh, later on in the video when we get to that, you're always gonna be positioned on the right side. Five's case on the line abreast loop or flat pass, you'll be on the outer right outboard of number two. So as I cross center point, I've turned my smoke off, I'm pitching eh, about five degrees. It's just something to do if you're by yourself with a number six pile. And about two and a half miles away from the crowd, I like to simulate the, the detach for number five. So, you know, picture I have a diamond formation right in front of me. I'm flying under the four jet. And about two and a half miles, the boss will tell me to detach, at which I'll say flex clear. I'll push, I'll roll, and I'll pull to the right away from the formation so that I'm clear from them. And also so that I'm eh, technically in front of the crowd so that they can still see me all right. At this point, six should be ready to go and you're already thinking about doing your beam call for the next maneuver, which is the opposing four point hesitation roll. So I can start making in here and I'll start saying, let me know in your beam, a beam, when you can take a mark, take a mark, stand by, mark it, start my stopwatch. Flex is in right four point. Try to get the four mile marker at 10 seconds. That looked pretty good to me. I'm already at 400 knots. I was a little bit fast on the run in here, but like I said, you don't have to be as uniform as six does. He has to peg 400 to the best of his ability. So this one, because we're gonna be upside down, we're gonna be at 200 feet. Uh, 150 is a little bit dangerous, so 200 feet is pretty good. You want to be, I mean, it, it's all based off of what you're comfortable with and what your opposing solo is comfortable with, but you'll notice by just a hair, I'm slightly more outboard uh, the show line uh, than that of what I was with uh, the knife edge, uh, because in that case, we're just doing one, you know, half bank there to 90 degrees. In this case, we're doing four of them, uh, which could inevitably roll us into each other uh, a lot more easily. So I want to be positioned just a little bit more outboard of what I was on the knife edge. Same thing as the knife edge though, I'll go smoke on at one mile, call it contact, and the smoke off. And then a little bit sooner I'll call ready, hit it. Yug, pop, roll, pull again. You want to cross on the invert. It's already past center point there, it's a little bit late. Then do two more, wings level. 
We'll call flex clear, six clear. Bank 45. Pull all the way up to 25 degrees. Stand by roll. Stand by roll. Stand by roll. And then you'll hold it on the knife edge and roll it back to wings level. Push out over the top. And then you'll try to capture your upbound heading, whatever uh, the show line is. I went a little bit far out, so I tried to cut into the line a little bit. And we'll descend a little bit. So the next maneuver is going to be the opposing uh, vertical pitch. This is the last maneuver I'm going to show uh, just by myself, since what follows this is the tuck over roll and the high alpha. But for this one, uh, just like the invert to inward roll and the horizontal roll, I'm going to be calling that I'm in left vertical pitch, just to indicate that I'm on the left side, since 5 is always going to be closest to the crowd for those type of maneuvers. So there's my beam point roughly. Start my stopwatch, powering up, and I'm turning in. That was a hair early on this one as well, so about 3.9, I believe. I'll try to get down to 400. You'll hear I have the speed brakes out. That's my engines are spooling down. This one, typically, you're going to initiate at 150 feet. Sorry about that. And you'll go smoke on at one mile. Go mile and a half mark. And smoke on. Pull. At a half mile, I'll go add it up, which is a call to go to mill power. Ready, hit it, full astic all the way up to 60 degrees for the flight path marker. I'll hold it there, try to freeze the nose, and roll at about 4,000. Pull, and we'll pull over the top. I'm shooting for 7,000 feet. And right there, I would have called Mark Ryzen, topping out 70290. And then 6 will tell me where he is in relation to that. Immediately, I look up, try Altitude. to pick up the line, try to find Altitude. out where 6 is. We'll call contact right about here. I'm trying to arrest 400 knots again. And we'll shoot for 200 feet. I was a little bit left and right uh, in relation to the line, so I tried to straighten myself out. Ready, hit it. One aileron right roll right, to the right. right. Flex clear, 6 clear. Smoke off, roll, and then pull. Directly behind the crowd. And you can pitch up and then turn to the right, at which you'll rejoin number six. All right, so that's just part one of this video. And uh, I'll try to edit this so that we can go right into the second portion of the video, which will be uh, myself with a number six pilot. And it'll just be pure, unfiltered, unedited comms just so that you can kind of get a general sense of everything I just explained uh, just in real time. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll cut into that. All right, everyone, we're back on the ramp here in Krasnodar. This time we got my good buddy Coop here in the 6-Jet. And for this time around, I'll be running through the entire thing unedited, unscripted, uh, no pausing whatsoever. And we're just going to go at it and have some fun. You ready, Coop? Sure. Alright, I'll turn the labels off and get the cockpit configured. And I am set. Alright, I'm going to flip my battery on now. Step by ladders. Ladders up now. Stay by the canopies. Canopies down now.
Slow left, slow left. Flight controlled. Flight controlled. Up eight, come on. Flex up 18, come to. Flex, call on the spring. Off checks. Check your smoke pressure arm. Check your trim set. Check your head norm. My heading is 310. Check your altimeter setting 29er, 79er for a corrected center point elevation of 0 feet. Check your bear warning 0. Check your FCS 12, 30, 30, 30. One down. Check your feel. Check your seat arm. Lights out. Check smoke pressure on. Smoke on. Smoke off. Two on the right wing. It's a setup seventy one percent lateral. Lexus said two nine seven nine zero feet right out. Set 2980, zero, zero feet right out. Flex push in 16, come to. Flex up 16, come to. So I'm 69 percent in a row. Easy breaks. Half pumps on minor up, flexes all zeros, one degrees, nose down, right out. Coop. 
pumps on the laps half right up. Flex is run up to 72%. Off brakes now. Coop detach. Easy brakes. Come left, okay. Easy brakes. Brakes. We're clear for takeoff. Check your parker pickoff maneuver. Our section takeoff maneuvers. Check your parker pickoff. Let's run them up. No factor. I shall clear, Scoop. I shall clear. Mark four or three. Match. Mile and a half. Mark four or correction three nine nine. Smoke on. Contact. Contact. Ready, hit it. Roll. Right. 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 I'm scared. Stay by roll. Stay by roll. Stay by roll. Inverted. Check complete. Pumps on. Pumps on. I nice hit Coop. And I start. Let me know when you're beam. Yep. What I can take, Mark. And by market. Like is in left inverted. Yeah, left inverted. Ten 
10 seconds. Mark 4.2. Really? Three miles. Mark 4.1. Really? Miles. Mark 400. Mesh. Mile and a half. Mark 400. Ready, head it. Go right, go right. Go right, go right. Go right, go right. Ready, head it. Go right, go right. Pull up, pull up. Which way? Which way? Contact pumps off. Pumps on, we're behind for the Fortish, check your tax light on. Goop, taxi light on. 345, he's in the pole, rolling out. He is in power. Flex. Flex. A little. Pull. Stand by the gear. Gear. Adding power. A little more pull. Flex turn on. Hunt down. Flex up. Boards up. Gear down. Hunt down. Flex up. Boards up. Add the knife for the force. Adding more power. Using some pull. We're on some bank. Going further left. Add a little more power. A little more pull. Adding a little more power. He's in the pull, rolling out. We got the forest at two miles. A little drive to level, he's in a little power. Looks a set, rolling in. Clear. On the show line, 20 feet low. Center point push now. to arc at 5 miles 350.
horizon, one nine two fifty, coming right. Three ten. Use the pull, rolling out. Three twenty using power. Using a little more power. Three thirty. You got two flex. Flex for bottom the cover for the opposing Richie. Smoke on. Smoke off. Coming right. A little more. Adding a hair power. Those are T at two miles. He's in power a little pull to level. Smoke on. Lead left. Smoke off. Ready, hit it. Smoke on. Three eighty. Sneak to vertical rolls. Bring in for five miles, 
356 Gates. Four miles, point six four. Three miles, point eight five. Two miles, point nine six. One mile, point nine six. That's a factor. Left turn for the line of flat pass. in the pole, rolling out. The Limer's flat pass at two and a half miles. So, on. Center point, smoke. Off. Singer. Flex attach. Take your mark. Take your mark. Stand by, mark it. Lex is in right four point. Right four point. Ten seconds. Mark four point out. Match. Three miles. Mark four point. Here late. Miles, mark for it. Match. Mile and a half. Mark 398. Smoke on. Contact. Contact. Ready, hit it. No light, no light! Which way? Which way? Stay by roll. Stay by roll. Seconds. Mark 4.2. Early. Fast. Three miles. Mark 4.6. Early. Miles. Mark 4.0. Early. Mile and a half. Mark 4.01. Hatch. Smoke. On. Add it up. Ready, hit it. Roll. Pull. Mark 
aircraft stop at 71290. Match. Altitude. Contact. Altitude. Contact. Section high alpha, check your flaps auto. Flaps auto. Went easy left. Rolling out. Section high off at two and a half miles. One eighty. One seventy boards up. He's on fire. One sixty five. One sixty. Oh, One fifty five. One fifty. One forty five. Pull to the set. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Coming left, we'll do a simulated rejoin to Delta. Three fifty six. He's in power. He's in the pole, rolling out. Got two flex. Flex. Adding a little power coming easy left. Using a little power. Coming for the left. A little more pull. A little more pull. In the pole, rolling out the little drive. Go get him! Ready, break. So this concludes my tutorial on flying the Blue Angels number five position in PCS World. Again, this is all just from an outsider's perspective on how the demonstration is flown, but I do hope some of these descriptions aid you in further understanding how to fly lead solo. If there are any more questions on something I might not have covered, please feel free to message me in the comment section below. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.